Welcome to this video guys. In the last video we saw how to account for a first and second order equations as we did before with the batch, the CSTR and the plug flow for liquid and gas phase. But the thing here is that these only depend on one function because they have no pressure drop. And now we see that these guys, uh, PBR, do depends on the same function, which is the modal balance plus the rate of reaction or the rate law, and depends also in the pressure drop. So we will need to find how to model that. So hopefully you remember from previous video we got these two equations. And this is very important because this changes as conversion changes. So if pressure changes, what happens? Concentration changes? Yeah, that's true. If you remember from our stoichiometric tables, we have this concept everywhere. If concentration changes, what happens? The rate of reaction changes. So remember, we have rate of reaction of A, and you have it as a concept of C of A. Well, of course, if concentration changes, you're going to change this. What happens is the rate of reaction changes. The same concentration changes again, because this is going to show you how the reactor advances in the reaction depending on the volume and of course if you have more volume you're going to have more conversion if you have more conversion you're going to have more concentration so let's say it's like a cycle now the final answer to our problem is Ergun equation this is how to model drop of pressure uh, pressure drop in how or length of our tower or reactor so you know as you advance more you are going to have more pressure drop. This is typically used in packed beds uh, or fluidized beds, reactors and towers. So since we are a packed bed reactor, it makes sense that we use it. Uh, the models, uh, or these models, you can see the differential of pressure with respect of length of the reactor. And this is the huge enormous equation. We are going to substitute that because actually the only thing that changes with conversion is this guy. So all this is a static number. Even though it's huge, it's just a constant. Actually, you can name it constant and will be constant divided by rho is dpdc, which is something we are going to try to do. Uh, term one is for laminar. So many times when you are laminar, this will go way lower. And turbulent is this term. So if you're in turbulent uh, cases, you will have this huge and this very low. This will be like a, maybe 3 and this will be 10,000. And backwards, this might be, I don't know, 300 and this will be 0 0.01. So I actually like it this way because you don't need to get a laminar equation for the Ergun equation or a turbulent equation for the Ergun equation or a general equation for the Ergun equation. Just have the this equation and know how to use it and you will Simply know that if you have is uh, laminar flow, just get rid of that. There's only gas density changes, as I said before. This guy here. Now, probably you want to know or you're wondering what's each stuff or what does that mean and this and this. Well, first of all, dP is the differential or the change of pressure. dC is the differential or change of bed length. So, you know that if you're coming here, you're going to lose pressure. So pressure here, let's say pressure one, 2, pressure 1, and initial pressure. This is going to be lower, and this is going to be way lower. And this is as set C goes up. Now G, what's G? It's mass flux. If you don't know it, you should know it by now, by transport phenomena, and also even mass uh, transfer. It's the mass flow per unit area. So let's say mole per unit time per unit area so let's say it's square meters this gc or gc is one for si units i think it's 32 for english units so just keep in mind that dp is the diameter of that particle or pellet so probably you know it or if not you should get and if you have variable changes well just get an average the viscosity of the gas is here the gas density, sorry, this is a raw. The gas density is here. 
these things you see a lot is the free space fraction compared to the bed volume. So you know there's a bed and you have many space here. So how do we account for that space? Well, it's accounted here. And of course the difference will be the volume of solids. And this 150 is the correction for laminar flow and this 1.75 is the correction for turbulent flow. And then we're, if you don't want to see this, uh, it's okay. I'm just going to derive a equation that we can use, or let's say a Ergun equation for PBR. So if you don't want to see this or you don't get it that much, it's okay because the thing is you know how to use it, know how to derive it. So here we go. From steady state, we know that the initial mass equals to the uh, final mass. So by definition, density times volumetric flow, initial conditions, will be the same as density times volumetric flow at that uh, point. Now, I'm going to use this equation and I'm going to get along this. So I just sent my volumetric flow right here. And you know by our stoichiometric tables how to account for that volumetric flow rate. So I'm going to substitute this value here, actually in this guy here. And this stays the same, you can see here. And instead of having this on the volume, I'm going to have all this here, which is right here. And then, well, I just change this one here up. This one goes up and this one goes up. Now we have, as I told you before, only density changes. Probably you're asking yourself, why are we doing this for density? Because I, as I told you before, here, where is it? Yeah. This is the only thing that changes in our process. So let's substitute that in here. And yeah, we got something huge. So this is new. And everything else is the same. Actually, this is here. This right here is only here. Well, density is here. And this change is exactly here. So let me just. Just tell you what is constant because I personally and I think you two guys uh, it's kind of hard to work with a lot of variables and numbers and especially if they're constant why not use one simple variable for example this here is a constant and this here is a constant why not add them and I get a constant and this here is a constant and this here is also a constant why not multiply and divide them and get a huge constant and since this is a constant, and this huge is a constant, and this little guy is also a constant, why not multiply and get only one equation? So probably you're getting the idea. We are going to do that. So that famous super constant is here. And the only thing that gets here, or the only thing that is not constant goes here pressure you know of course is going to change temperature we're going to see later that in isothermal design it's one or we don't account it but I do let it for later use for chapter 8 in which we're going to have changes in temperature so I'm not going to drop it right now and the changes of flow of course we have now the change of length of the catalyst versus the mass of catalyst well as you can see we have DC but you know, guys, we're not measuring uh, length of the of the bed or our pack bed. We are measuring amount of mass. And hopefully, if you are very creative or a good engineer, you're probably uh, already knowing that this is this area is constant. So therefore, we can relate volume. I know volume. You can relate it with the density, with mass and volume can be related with area and length so look how we're going to relate length and mass the differential we want it to change it to mass okay guys so by definition mass equals uh, volume times density this bulk density okay because this length doesn't care if it's uh, full or not full actually if you have doubt with bulk densities and solid densities go here guys I'm not going to uh, treat this topic right now I'm going to do a special video on this particular slide but I'm going to suppose you know exactly what's the difference between bulk density and solid density 
Actually guys, if you don't not know it, pause the video, go to this video, which is the next one, I think, analyze it, uh, please note the difference, and then go back. So, you've seen that video now, we can continue. Volume, by definition, is essentially area times height. In this case, height is length of the reactor, or C. Our density stays the same. Or, a little bit more complex, but I will uh, do it. The mass is the same volume times the, de the solid density, but you need to account for that uh, space, that free area. So, that's why I use this. You got area, length, Rossi and this guy here. So yeah, probably you are confused. Hopefully no. I think the most common sense is this one, but we also have this one. So yeah, it depends on you. What do you prefer? Uh, both seem logic to me, so I don't care. But yeah, just be sure to see this video. Actually, you can relate bulk density with solid density. It has something to do with the blank spaces. Uh, but that's in, a do in another video, guys, okay? So, we got this definition of W. You can see how W and C are already related. So let me solve for C. I will get this. And why not substitute this C value here? Which is actually what I done here. You can see this C value is here. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to take out all because this here are constants. W is not a constant, of course, this is a differential, but we can send this part right here. Here. And because it's a division in another division, we're going to send it as a division. So once again, we have this master equation, which we will be using for multiple reactions and with change of temperature. So you don't need to memorize it, but just keep in mind that this is the one that we're going to use in multiple reactions. But we don't want multiple reactions, we want single reactions in this case. So let's keep moving it. Let's use this a, uh, alpha constant. I really don't know where they use this 2, 4, but I'm going to keep with the book. So you don't have to uh, change the constant that I use beta and they use beta 0 or beta whatever. So how do I substitute all this data, new data here, which is here? You know beta is already a huge number. Let me actually go back. You know beta is this. And now we are adding info to beta, which is this. And we are going to turn it to alpha divided by 2. Okay. And these guys here. And the temperature and the flows. I actually like this one right here, but because this one goes and this one goes. No, this one goes here. But they, the book models this as Y. I don't know why they use it, but Y is the change of pressure. So probably P0 is always bigger than P, so Y will be always bigger than, no, lower than 1 and more than 0. So what they do is they send this guy here and you have this guy here, so they change it to Y and to Y. So that's our model right now. Uh, well, this FT changes with respect of uh, Epsilon, so we're going to count for that. So you know that FT at any moment is initial FT plus the change of FT. And then they divide, they do these things, so I'm going to substitute this here with this part. And I get these guys, which probably seems familiar to you. This is the how do we account for the change in volume. This is how we account for temperature. Uh, pressure drop is here. And uh, yeah, essentially we're done, guys. For isothermal design, you know that just take away that. And this will be our actual equation. Yeah, it's here. So, once again, sorry for the long video. If you jumped the video, you should now get this. We got this equation with these parameters. Actually, this is constant. This is constant. Well, x, sorry, it's the dependent variable, and this is our independent variable. No, backwards, sorry. This is the independent, and this is dependent. You can see y and w. Now, we will have to account for these guys here. We have f2. 
As you can see, it's a differential equation which is not nice to solve. And this will be our function which depends on conversion. So let me just break it for now. I think, yeah, uh, I think I'm going to explain this or how to solve it or what have we done. But essentially, guys, don't forget that we derive an equation in which we can model the pressure drop with respect of conversion or mass of catalyst. So the idea is that uh, you know that we have another equation for the pressure drop. See you in the next video. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.